In this video I will show you how to make cone or bullet shapes on the metal lathe. Using an attachment that I designed and built, this attachment will easily cut cone or bullet shapes on material up to 2 inches in diameter. I would like to use these cone or bullet shapes to cover up suspension bolts at the front of my 1929 Ford Hot Rod. Hi, I'm John from 1929FordHotRod.com. One of the things that I wanted to do on the 1929 Ford Hot Rod was to cover up some suspension bolts with aluminum cone shapes or bullet shapes. To do that I needed to make a new type of cutter for the or attachment for my metal lathe. I came up with a bit of a plan. What I did is I drew up the one inch diameter on some paper here. I discovered to get the cone shape that I wanted right here that my cutter would have to have a radius of two and a half inches and that's quite a distance away from turning point or pivot point to the cutting edge and most ball cutting attachments just simply don't do that. I also wanted to do this for some two inch stock for some bigger bolts and I noticed that I would even have to be further away my pivot point would have to be have a four and a half inch radius to give me this cone shape on two inch diameter stock. I'll show you what I created for the metal lathe. When I purchased the metal lathe a lot of tooling and a variety of accessories came with it. One of them is this over the top ball cutting attachment. I discovered very quickly that this wasn't going to quite do what I wanted to do for cutting the cone shapes that I wanted. So I decided to come up with my own unique little attachment and this is it right here. Before I start, I'm going to have to remove my compound feed. To do that, I have to remove these two cap screws and then I'll put on my, my cone cutting attachment. I've designed this cone cutting attachment to fit directly onto the cross feed of the metal lathe. So it'll just mount on like this and I have two beveled screws that I'm going to use to tighten this all up. I made this from a lot of steel that I already had in the shop. I just had to purchase some of these special T-bolts to bolt everything together and keep everything in place. So this uh, base plate is made out of 3 8 inch steel. This block here is 5 8 and this is a piece of 1 inch square stock that I milled out for my cutting attachment. My pivot point is nothing more than a hardened old uh, seat belt fastener that fastens the seat belts or retracting seat belts in a lot of North American vehicles. It's got the Torx head on it. What I did is I drilled the back of this 5 8 block out so that I could press this in with a, my 20 ton press. Then I just used some old uh, wheel nuts from something that I had left over. The bevel end is going down into the one inch square block, adds a little more rigidity to it and the second nut double nuts everything to keep this all nice and tight. So this is how it turns. I have a nice long handle here that I can adjust any way I want. My cutter can move in and out quite a distance. Right now I have the cutter set so that I can have it two and a half inches away from my pivot point. So the tip of the cutter to the center of my pivot point is exactly two and a half inches. And you can see this turns pretty good. What I might do is I may add in an extra block underneath here so that I don't get any up and down. There's just a slight wee bit of up and down. I've tried this out and it has cut cones quite nicely on the lathe so far. 
I've set the lathe up just like the drawing that I showed you at the start of this video. I have a carriage stop here. My cutter can only come up to one and five eighths inches plus a little wee bit for the rough edge here. I do have the two and a half inch radius that I want. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to just leave my cutter a little wee bit out from the edge of the stock and I'm going to bring it in for my final cut to exactly the one inch diameter. To start cutting my cone shape I have the edge of the cutter, the center point of the cutter, about an eighth of an inch from the very edge, the face edge of my round aluminum stock. So let's start cutting. <laughs> I move the carriage about a quarter of a turn for each cut. Take my time cutting. I have both hands on my cutting attachment and I move it fairly slowly. I am using a carbide cutter. You can see the cone shape starting to form. As you get closer to the center point of the stock, it's wanting to take a little wee bit more material off, so you got to watch that it doesn't want to grab and jump on you. to grab and jump a little wee bit. I'm about a half inch away from my carriage stop. turn this off and finish it up and then I'll show you a little closer to the end. My carriage is at the stop that I've set up. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in my cross feed in a little wee bit and do a couple final cuts. Again, taking my time Pretty decent finish on the cut right now as it is.
probably make two more passes here. I'm very close to my final shape of the cone that I'm looking for. my final cut I'm going to uh, turn the speed of the lathe up a bit. I turn the speed of the lathe up to for my final cut. I'm going to bring the cutter in so that it just touches the outer diameter and now I'm going to very carefully make my final cut moving the cutter very slowly so that I get a nice good clean cut. I don't have to spend too much time sanding and polishing later on. I'm by no means a machinist. I'm self-taught. I'm learning as I go along. anybody has suggestions on how to do this better, I'm always open to those comments. So there we have the finished cone shape. So this is a close up of the final cut. Now all I'll need to do is do some sanding. I'm going to have to decide how long I want the attachment to be. So I'm going to use uh, actually probably draw a hole in here and make it a hex shape and use two set screws to hold it on to the front of the suspension bolts or nuts. So this is my attachment for cutting cones. Feedback and comments are always welcome. Thanks for watching. Please visit my website at 1929fordhotrod.com.